All these weak acids and weak bases do have equilibrium. And we talked about conjugates, how conjugates are related by an H plus back and forth. We're going to look now more about those equilibria and see some of the things you can get. So this is three sets of conjugates. And again, conjugates are just related by plus or minus H plus. The acid will have more hydrogens. The bases will have less. So acetic acid has more hydrogens than the acetate. Ammonium has more more hydrogens than ammonia, hydrogen carbonate, more hydrogens than carbonate. All of these acids and bases don't ionize very much. They won't make a lot of hydronium or hydroxide. It's usually less than 5%, sometimes a lot less than 5%. So unlike, say, HCl, a strong acid, which one mole of HCl makes one mole of hydronium, these acids, like ammonium, you have one mole of ammonium, you might only have something like 0.0001 one moles of hydronium. You don't have the ionization in weak systems that you do in strong systems. This is the example with acetic acid. Acetic acid reacts with water. It makes hydronium. It's an acid and the conjugate base. All right. Now remember that acids always make hydronium. That's the thing that makes acids and acids. Water here is acting as a base and the conjugate acid of that would be hydronium just like the conjugate base of acetic acid would be the acetate ion. Ka, which I babbled about a little bit earlier, Ka is an equilibrium constant, a K, and it's an acid-based equilibrium constant. And for this reaction, remembering that water is a liquid and we keep liquids and solids out, Ka equals hydronium times the conjugate base concentration divided by the acetic acid concentration. And this has actually been a well-studied system, Ka 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Remember Remembering that equilibrium constants less than one are very reactant favored, this is definitely a weak acid because K less than one, most of this is going to be on the reactant side. There won't be a lot of products here. All Ka's for our purposes will be numbers less than one. Sometimes they'll be equal to one and if they go larger than one, we'll just say very large. <laughs> You'll see why in a little bit, but we, this is the form of Ka. Ka equals hydronium times conjugate base divided by the weak acid. And again, because the weak acid doesn't 100% break down, you will have some weak acid around. You'll also have some conjugate base around. It's all related by the hydronium right there. So Ka is an acid dissociation constant. It's mostly used for weak acids. And the form of these Ka's is always the same. It's acid plus water making hydronium and the conjugate base. So Ka equals hydronium times acetate divided by the acid itself. And again, the Ks we're going to look at here are very, very small. Here's um, a generic representation for some random HA acid. And again, we don't put liquids and solids in, so water is excluded. Hydronium times the conjugate base divided by the acids. Weak acids have Ka's that are less than one. And because K is less than one, that means you have a very reactant favored system. You won't have a lot of hydronium because hydronium is a product. pHs usually run in the range two to seven. All right, they have to be acidic, so 7 would be neutral, so it's probably going to be a little less than 7. However, most of the time, because you don't have a lot of hydronium, pHs won't get any lower than 2, and that's a rough thing, and I'm sure there's exceptions and stuff like that. A weak base has a Kb associated constant with it, just like Ka's for acid. Now with a base, bases react with water. They make a conjugate acid, which I've written there as BH+, and hydroxide. So bases make hydroxide and acids make hydronium. Kb's then have hydroxide in them. But you can see that once again, K is less then one, we're going to see values of them here. That means a lot of reactant, not a lot of product. We won't have a lot of hydroxide here. The pHs won't be as basic as things like sodium hydroxide. So these pHs tend to run in the range of, a, of like 12 uh, down to just above 7 a little bit. Depends on the base. But again, all of this is just because these bases don't dissociate very much into hydroxide. So you don't get the same kind of kick. So Ka is an acid dissociation constant and Kb is a basic dissociation constant. 
constant. And they're very useful when you have weak acids and weak bases. So HA, the random acid plus water, makes hydronium plus the conjugate as the conjugate base, excuse me, A minus. That's the Ka expression. Now let's remember here that A minus can also be a base. So let's write now A minus as a base. A minus, the conjugate base, is a base in its own right, and it will react with water to make conjugate acid and some hydroxide. This is what Kb means. Now, if you look at these two expressions, you might know where we're going because we have HA on both sides. We've got A minus on both sides. So let's combine those two expressions and let's see like what's left off. And if you do that, the Ka's uh, will combine, the A minuses will cancel, the HA's will cancel, you'll have two waters, two waters equals hydronium plus hydroxide. Guess what? That's Kw. Kw is hydronium times hydroxide. And we got that same expression by multiplying Ka times Kb. Remember, if you add equations together, you can multiply the K's to get the overall K. This is just Kw. So why I bring this out is that if you have a weak acid and it's Ka and it's conjugate base with its Kb, Ka times Kb, if they're conjugates, will equal Kw. And that's a really cool relationship. We're going to see lots of uses for that. Now you have to have them be conjugates, all right? So like acetic acid and acetate or ammonia and ammonium. Those kind of Ka's times Kb's would equal Kw. But you couldn't use, for example, like acetic acid and ammonium. Those are acids and bases, but they're not conjugates of each other. They must be conjugates for this to be effect. Now, just like hydronium times hydroxide equals Kw, and we saw that pH plus pOH equals 14, you can do the same kind of thing here for the Ka times Kb. And if you do it, then you get pKa plus pKb equals 14. We will use this a lot, as well as pH plus pOH equals 14 uh, as we go through the next several lecture sections. This is a table of acids and bases, and this is one that's actually in problem set two, and I believe problem set three as well. None of these numbers are numbers you have to memorize, but I'd like to talk about the organization of things like this. So first of all, there's all kinds of acids listed on the far left, and a whole bunch of bases listed on the far right. If you start with the acids in the upper left corner, you can see that there's a couple of the really strong ones, perchloric, hydrochloric, nitric acid. Those those are some of the super strong acids. And when you look at their Ka, it just says large, all right? That means that we really don't worry about Ks for strong acids. They're so product favored, it's almost like there's no reactant left over, so don't worry. Hydronium is equal to one, that's the Ka, that's kind of the base that all these things will go on. And then you have a whole bunch of weak acids. And these weak acids go from biggest Ka to smallest Ka. So you can see that sulfurous acid there, H2SO3, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. And then you keep going down, there's 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. So Ka's are getting smaller as you go down. Well, if you think about what K means, as K's get bigger, you have more product. And more product for an acid means more hydronium, more H3O+. So as Ka gets bigger, you're going to have more hydronium, more acid. That's going to make for a stronger acid. So the strongest acids are listed in the upper left corner and the acids get weaker as you go down. So if you go down to the very bottom down there, there's like ethanol, which is basically not an acid. It's like so weak. Um, hydrogen, ammonia. Ammonia can actually be an acid, but it's so weak that nobody like thinks about it. Um, because hydronium times hydroxide equals Kw, and because Ka times Kb equals Kw, on the other side, we have the bases. But the base strength is biggest on the bottom, and it gets weaker as you go up. 
because KB is getting bigger as you go down on the right. Bigger KBs mean more hydroxide, more base strength, if you will, and the weakest bases are up here. So this is a really cool kind of effect. And notice that conjugates are right across from each other. So uh, there is um, HF, which is a weak acid, and there's fluoride. The conjugates are literally right across. If you multiply that Ka by the KB uh, for fluoride, it should give you KW and that should work all the way up and down. So the acids are getting stronger as you go up the chart. The bases are getting stronger as you go down the chart. And this is kind of how this stuff rolls. It's a little bit weird, but this is why this chart is done this way. We're going to use these KAs and KBs a lot, all right? And I'll use these values in upcoming problems. There's nothing wrong with Googling KA and KB values, which you can find, but your numbers might be a little different than some of the ones we're going to use just FYI. Um, so this chart is going to be something you'll want to hold on to and compare. Here are five bases, and they all have a KB value. And the question is, which one is the strongest base? Well, all of these KB values are equilibrium constants. And as we saw in the last section, Ks greater than one have lots of product, Ks less than one have mostly reactant. So in this case, strongest base means most hydroxide, and hydroxide is a product. So to answer this question, we want the largest KB value because the largest KB will have the most product. Most product means most hydroxide and most hydroxide means strongest base. So if you look at those numbers right there, it looks like carbonate is going to be the strongest base. The strongest base is the biggest KB. 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4 is bigger than all those other numbers right there. So that means carbonate will have the most hydroxide of all of those bases. Now, carbonate is still a weak base, and compared to like sodium hydroxide, carbonate will pale. It's not going to be able to compete. But of those bases up there, that would be the strongest base. You could do the same kind of things with Ka's. Biggest Ka would be strongest, i.e. most hydronium. Um, it's kind of cool how this works out. So the, it's actually able to classify acids and bases by strength. And again, strength just means most hydroxide for a base, most hydronium for an acid. Acids on that chart go from weak in the lower left to strong in the upper left, and the bases start weak in the upper right and move to stronger ones in the lower right. Chemical reactions always go from the stronger acid and base pair to the weaker acid base pair. So using these K values, you can actually make pretty good predictions as to how reactions are going to go. Will they go to product? Will they be made? Will they stay on the reactant side? And we're going to use those Ka or Kb values to figure this out, which is pretty clever. Here's an example with nitric acid. Nitric acid plus water makes hydronium plus nitrate. Now, normally I would write nitric acid with a one-way arrow. I would not write it with an equilibrium. But for this discussion, I'd like to think about it here as an equilibrium. Strong acids are 100% dissociated. So what that means is that strong acids will create weak conjugate bases, all right? So if nitric acid is as strong as I say it is, then that means that its conjugate, which is nitrate, is going to be one of the weakest bases of all. It can't compete with the strength of, um, uh, of the nitric acid, all right? If nitrate tried to grab an H plus to make HN, it would quickly be reversed back to nitrate. So what this means is that nitrate is essentially not a base at all. It doesn't have any basic power. We can do the same kind of thing here for water and the hydronium ion. Now remember that this process here is pushing to the right and if it's pushing to the right, not only is nitrate unable to push back to nitric acid, hydronium, we're going to say, can't push back to water. Like it can't give up its H plus to become water again. So literally, in this case, nitrate is not a base. It is literally pH of zero. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it has no effect. I was going to say pH of zero, but that would be acidic. So that's really stupid. Sorry. Anyway, in this case, nitrate is not a base at all. It can't push back 
back on the other one. And every acid and base reaction, again, will have two acids and two bases. And it's always going to lie, the equilibrium will always lie towards the weaker pair. And in this case, really, it's not an equilibrium at all. Those strong acids and strong bases push 100% to the product side. This one's going to be 100% product. K will be very large. And that's what it said on that chart right there. So nitric acid plus water makes hydronium and nitrate, all right? The strong acid pushes to the weaker side, so nitrate here is a weak base. And again, I wouldn't even use an equilibrium, honestly, but it's kind of a useful thing to think about. So in this case, <clears throat> nitric acid is a strong acid. It's stronger than hydronium, all right? Nitric acid pushes to the right. Hydronium doesn't push back to the left. So that means HNO3 is stronger than H3. Plus. Water is a stronger base than nitrate, all right? Water is also pushing, if you will, to the product side. Nitrate is not able to push back. So again, for this kind of reaction, K is very large. And again, what I would do for strong acids and strong bases, don't even think about them as equilibrium because it's so 100%, it's so product favored that the conjugates can't push back, all right? So we would say that all strong acids acids and strong bases, 100% product side, they can't compete. But what we're seeing here is how to predict reactions. The strong acid pushes to the weak acid. The stronger base pushes towards the weaker base. And both HNO3 and water are stronger than hydronium and nitrate in this case, making K's very large. For a weak acid, though, we have to be a little bit more careful because there is a difference here in how acids and bases work. Now, we saw that the acetic acid K was 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, a number less than 1. That means that it's very reactant favored. So in this case now, if we compare the acids to each other's and the bases to each other's, to each other, we can then make some different conclusions. If this is so weak, then we can compare hydronium here the acid on the product side to acetic acid, the acid on the reactant side. And this reaction is pushing to the left. That's what K less than one means. It's pushing to the left. So what this tells us here, hydronium is a stronger acid than acetic acid. Conversely, acetate is a stronger base than water. It's pushing back the other way. Water is unable to compete as a base with acetate. So again, because the strong pushes back on the weak, all right, hydronium is a stronger acid than acetic acid. Because again, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, the Ka much less than 1, acetic acid isn't doing very well here relative to the strength of hydronium. And conversely, acetate is a stronger base than water. It's pushing back towards the reactant side as well. So the value of K will also tell you then a lot of times how these reactions are going to uh, fall out. It'll help us to figure out the strengths of acids and bases. That's where that table comes from. It's pretty cool. Strong acids and strong bases together create a lot of energy, and this will basically talk about why. Now here we have HCl, hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide, strong acids and strong bases. And let's write it as equilibrium, but in reality, just know this is gonna be one-sided. Anyway, it makes water and sodium chloride. Let's break down the ions, all right? Remember that anything aqueous, you can break down into the positive cation and the negative anion ion, kind of like a net ionic reaction. So you have H plus and Cl minus from HCl and Na plus and OH minus from sodium hydroxide. In a net ionic reaction, you don't break up liquid, solids, or gases, so water stays the same, but you do break up Na plus and Cl minus. Well, Na plus and Cl minus are spectator ions. They're on both sides, so pull those out. You end up with H plus plus OH minus making water, and lo and behold, this is essentially the the KW expression in reverse. Now, KW was two waters making hydronium and hydroxide. You can use H3O plus instead of H plus. That's fine and have two waters. Doesn't affect anything. So if you wanted to estimate the K for a strong acid, strong base, you would take one over KW. One over 10 to the minus 14th is 10 to the positive 14th. K's larger than one are product favored. Strong 
strong acid, strong bases, have huge Ks, very, very product favored. 10 to the 14th again is so big, I wouldn't even consider this an equilibrium. It's literally product favored. This is the time to use those single arrows pointing in the opposite directions. So here's the punchline. In our classes, when you mix equal molar quantities of a strong acid and strong base, they annihilate each other. There's no strong acid or strong base left. And you end up with water and, in this case, sodium chloride. It can be some other kind of salt, but it's going to be that. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes in demonstrations, people will mix strong acids and strong bases together. And in theory, if you've done it right and you have equal moles, they will annihilate each other. So you have just water and sodium chloride left. And that, if you drank it, which I don't recommend, by the way, but if you did drink it, it would taste like salt water. And salt water, of course, won't kill you. It'll taste a little weird, but it's not bad. So in theory, sodium chloride uh, is the only thing left along with water as a product, and you can drink it. Now, if you ever have access to strong acids and strong bases. Don't you dare drink this. I would be terrified that you would not uh, measure the acids and bases right. You'd have a little extra HCl or a little extra sodium hydroxide. And trust me, that won't feel good going down your windpipe. So don't do this. But in theory, if you mix them correctly, they should make a neutral solution. In future discussions, when we talk about having equal moles of strong acid and strong bases, the pH will be just seven. It's gonna be neutral. That's what we'll uh, pr pr predict. And most of the time, that's right. If it's in a pure environment, it will be right. But again, don't do this in the real world. I'd be worried you'd hurt yourself and I would feel guilty. If you have a weak acid reacting with a strong base, another kind of process occurs. So let's talk about acetic acid, CH3CO2H, reacting with hydroxide. And that's going to make water, because hydroxide pulls the H plus off, the conjugate acid, and acetate, the conjugate base of acetic acid. And the question is, can we estimate the um, value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction? And believe it or not, you can. People that have stared at this longer uh, than maybe you have realize that that reaction is the reverse of the acetate reaction with water. Acetate plus water making conjugate acid plus hydroxide. That's the Kb value for acetate. So if you're curious as to what the K is for this reaction, which is acetic acid plus hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, whatever, what you can do is take one over the Kb value. One over the Kb for acetate, which I think is like 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10th, I don't remember, but something like that, you get the very large 1.8 times 10 to the 9th. And that's a very product favored K. What the heck are you doing, Dr. Russell? I know some of you are thinking that, and I totally understand. What this means for us is that if you take a strong base and you add it to a weak acid, it's going to be very product favored. We're going to assume that all the strong bases and strong acids push the equilibrium to the product side. That's what the 10 to the 9th number means there. We got it by reversing the reaction. One over the KB is how we got that. Don't be too worried about that. But another thing that's interesting, too, if you have equal moles of weak acid and strong base, they, by this large K, will knock each other out. You'll end up with water and acetate. And if you have equal moles of weak acid and strong base, those two wipe each other out. But the pH is going to be a little bit basic because the weak acid now has created conjugate base to take its place. And why that's so weird is that strong acids plus strong bases make essentially salt water, which in theory you could drink. Weak acids plus strong bases, if you add equal moles, you're actually not going to want to drink those. In this case, you'd have a slightly basic solution, and that will not taste good. That would not be good for you to drink. So, 
Here, what we've done is we've justified why strong acids and strong bases, in this case, push reactions to the product side, all right? But the other thing is that if you have equal moles of weak acid and strong base, you don't have a neutral solution. The weak acid creates its conjugate base. The pH is going to be basic when the two moles are equal. This is an example with a strong acid and a weak base, okay? Now, hydronium is the product of a strong acid, so HNO3 makes essentially uh, hydronium. And ammonia is a weak base, so it's gonna react together to make uh, water and ammonium, all right, the conjugate acid of ammonia, et cetera, et cetera. And absolutely, we can predict the value of K. If you look at that reaction long enough, uh, that's the opposite of the Ka, for ammonium. So ammonium NH4 plus is a weak acid and Ka for ammonium would be NH4 plus plus water and the products would be hydronium. Ammonium is an acid so it creates hydronium plus the conjugate base ammonia. So if you wish to guess the K value for a strong acid plus ammonia, take one over the Ka for ammonium and that number comes out to be 1.8 times 10 to the ninth. That's all also very product favored. So just like before, we're going to assume that strong acids push reactions to the product side, all right? We, we're going to see that both with the strong acids like here and the strong bases on the other side. But the weak systems have a surprise at the end, all right? So here the strong acid wipes out the ammonia, it's true, but the conjugate acid of the weak base is going to be around when the moles are equal. So you're going to have a slightly acidic solution when you add strong acid to weak bases. This is kind of a wild thing. So here's what we've seen so far. Strong acid plus strong bases. You add them together, very product favored, but you end up with basically water and some kind of salt, pH neutral. Here we have a strong acid and a weak base, and you add equal mole amounts. You end up with a slightly acidic solution. It's not from the strong acid, it's the conjugate acid of the weak base. And earlier we saw a strong base plus weak acid. They they wipe each other out, very product favored and stuff. However, at the end, you end up with a weakly basic solution then. Those weak acids have kind of a surprise when the moles are equal. This is not something you see with strong acids and strong bases. It's a fascinating thing that's going to have implications for what we do coming up. So this reaction, hydrochloric acid plus carbonate makes chloride and hydrogen carbonate. And the question is, for this reaction, decide if the equilibrium lies mostly on the right or the left, all right? And it could be exactly in the middle, which is kind of funny, but anyway, no, none of the above. Well, here's the punchline. Look for strong acids and strong bases. Strong acids and strong bases always push to the other side. So HCl here is absolutely going to push this reaction reaction to the product side, this is going to be a reaction pushing towards the right. If HCl was not a strong acid, then we'd have to compare Ka's. So we'd look up the Ka of whatever acid we had on the reactant side, compare it to the acid on the product side, the HCO3 minus, and the bigger K would push towards the smaller K. But in this case, if you have a strong acid or a strong base, they push big time to the opposite side. Hydrogen fluoride is an acid and can donate a proton to a base such as ammonia. As a base, NH3 accepts the proton from HF to produce a fluoride ion and an NH4 plus ion. HF and fluoride ion constitute a conjugate pair, as do ammonia and ammonium ion. As a chemist, it's cool to know that if you add equal moles of strong acid and strong base, you end up with a neutral solution. It's also nice to know that if you add equal moles of strong acid and weak base, you'll end up with a slightly acidic solution, etc., etc. Weak acids plus weak bases, it's much more difficult to tell what's going to happen at the end point because in a weak acid, weak base, both the acid and its conjugate base and the base and its conjugate get acid, they can all have an effect on the overall pH of systems. So knowing where weak acid and weak bases will end up uh, takes a little bit of consideration.
The product cation will be the conjugate acid of the weak base. The product anion will be the conjugate base of the weak acid. All right, and that's totally fine, but it's who knows, like, will you have more acid? Will you have more base? We're not going to talk as much about weak acid and weak base interactions because they're kind of tricky. You'd have to know the individual values of K for both acids and both bases on the reactant and product side and compare them to see which one would dominate. pH of the solution does depend on the strengths, the Ka and Kb values of the cation and anion relative to the acids and bases. And so basically what this is, is this is an overview of why we're not really going to study weak acid plus weak base reactions so much in Chem 223. Most of the time people will use strong acids and strong bases. Strong acids and strong bases, you know what's going to happen. You know the direction it's going to go and there's no questions. But weak acids plus weak bases can be kind of tricky. You have to know how the acids and base strengths work out, and it's just more complicated. It can be done, and there are times when you have to do it, but in Chem 223, we're not going to focus on weak acid plus weak base reactions so much. This is an overview of the four kinds of uh, interactions that can happen and what happens especially when you get to the equal mole conditions, all right? And you can see here the first one is strong acid plus strong base. If the moles are equal, they wipe each other out. You end up with just water and some kind of neutral salt. So the pH will be seven for strong acid plus strong bases. Strong acid plus weak bases, when you have equal moles, they annihilate each other. However, the weak base is converted to its conjugate acid, and the pH of those will be acidic. It's going to be less than 7. So in this case with ammonium and ammonia and hydronium, excuse me, they react to make ammonium and water. It's the ammonium that's left over when the moles are equal that creates the acidic uh, solutions. And the opposite happens with weak acids and strong bases. If the moles are equal, all of the weak acid is turned into to a conjugate base, and that base makes the pH basic, pH is greater than 7. In this example, this is what they call the formate ion. That would be the source of the basic part. However, weak acid plus weak bases are much more difficult to figure out because you have to know the relative strengths of Ka and Kb, uh, what's happening, so we won't talk about weak acid plus weak base interactions as much.